Hello guys, and we're back again with another video, and today I'm filming in the dark. Usually I wouldn't film at night, because the lighting is not that great, I don't have any extra lighting or anything, so I have to make do with the lighting I got in the room. One of the light is currently blown out as well, so it's going to be a little bit darker than usual. I would prefer to film during the day, but I don't know, I just felt like filming a video now. So anyway, we've got some samples here. I think I've reviewed all of these, but then I got um, Hugo jeans, and then I also have five other fragrances in this box, I believe, as well. In this box, I have these. One of these is by Joe Malone. It's Ginger Biscuit, the 2023 version. So let's see if we can get this focusing. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't really want to focus, but if you squint your eyes, maybe you can read it. I don't know. You might have to squint pretty hard, but, um, believe me, this says Ginger Biscuit 2023. It just doesn't want to focus. Um, anyway, that's one of them. The other fragrances I got is Coney Island. By Bond number nine. And I don't know what's going on with this camera, but it doesn't really seem to want to focus today. Um, no idea why. There you go. Um, let's just see if we can get this focusing. Nope, the Joe Malone one really doesn't want to focus. Okay, it must be something to do with whatever type of label this is. The, the label might just be a little bit too shiny and it's not focusing on it. Doesn't matter. Um, so, the first one I want to review is actually 1 million Alexa. Alexa. Just because this is the only one in the box that I haven't actually smelled yet. Um, Paco Rabanne, 1 million Alexa. Um, yeah, it doesn't want to focus. So my camera today is not cooperating. Um, it's quite a shame, you know, because usually I don't have this problem that often. Like it'll it'll focus eventually, but it doesn't matter. So let's give this a, a smell or a try. Um, I've been actually pretty excited to try this one just because I've had this box for a few weeks now and it's the only one I haven't tried. I've been putting off for so long, like purposely not trying it. Just so I could do this first impression on video. So already it's a lot different than the the original one million, it does smell quite different. I get a lot of, um, it's like a very Tonka vanilla smell. That's quite strange. For a one million, this smells a lot like Tonka and vanilla. It's very sweet and I want to say a little bit peppery, like it's got a little bit of that Invictus Victory Alexa smell as well. So I don't know if there's any similarities between 1 million Alexa and Victory Alexa, but they are quite similar. Um, probably just because it's the same brand Paco Rabanne might be using same ingredients um, maybe the same Tonka or whatever but this smells uh, quite familiar it, it does have a little bit of woodiness Tonka vanilla that peppery smell um, actually I know what it is it's um, 1 million lucky 
So this has a little bit of that 1 million lucky DNA in there. So that makes a lot more sense because this is 1 million elixir. So since they did discontinue 1 million lucky, I think this is probably the closest because it's still got a little bit of that DNA in there. I know 1 million lucky has um, hazelnut and plum. So I am getting a little bit of that smell in here. It is a little bit like um, that dark, like the dark fruity smell. It's not that fruity, but it's like dark and it's got that like sweetness to it. That sweet plum smell. So I'm going to just say this has got that plum and hazelnut in it too, like 1 million lucky. Um, but with Tonka, a little bit of pepper. I don't know what type of wood that is. I don't know if it is even wood or if it is the hazelnut. Um, I, don't, I, don't, oh, I don't know if it's sandalwood or a different type of wood, but it's not that bad, not that amazing. Like it's, I, I wanted to like this a lot more actually, because there was a, quite a lot of hype around Elixir. Everyone was like, one of the best um, flankers from 1 million in a long time. I haven't tried the other 1 million fragrances, so I'm out of the loop with those. The, the only 1 million fragrances I've tried is the original, the Privé, the Lucky, and then this. So I know there's like a million more. Uh, I know there's the Parfum. I, I don't know if there's an EDP, but there is um, like a Royal Oud. And then there's like one more. There's like one other, or there's probably more than one, but there's like, it's got the red on the front, like the red circle. I don't know which one that is, but it's the gold bar and it's got like that red circle. And there's one with like solar notes or something in there. I didn't try that one yet. Yeah, this is pretty close to 1 million lucky. And I gotta say, it's it's alright. It's nice. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But maybe that's because I've already got 1 million lucky. And I like that a little bit more. It's a little bit more plum in there. A little bit more rich and dark and mysterious. I like 1 million lucky a lot more than this. So let's look on uh, Fragranica at the notes. Just so I can tell you what's actually in it. One million elixir. Yeah. Um, it's got apple, osmanthus, rose, tonka, vanilla, cedar, and Devana. You know, here's a little fact. I hate Osmanthus. Can't stand Osmanthus. I wouldn't have even noticed it was in here. But now, I I understand it, why it's in here. Because this also gives me a little bit of that, um, I just bit my lip. Um, it gives me a little bit of um, Parfum Stamali Herod smell as well. So it's got a little bit of that Herod DNA in there from Parfum Stamali. And that, I believe, has like Alimi resin. It's also got like Osmanthus and a bunch of other notes. But this has like that, a little bit similar to Parfums to Mali Herod. And a cross between like 1 million Lucky as well. I don't really get any of the original 1 million DNA in there. Even though I wish it did, because I love the original 1 million DNA. It's got like that orange, that woody smell. It's a little bit more spicy um even the rose in here i don't smell rose but i think in the original one million you can smell a little bit more florals in there the apple in here so the apple is that plum smell but i i think this is more of a red apple so on fragrantica it says just apple and there's a picture of a green apple but in my experience red apple is used differently than green apple in perfume I think this is a red apple despite having a picture of a green apple or just saying apple on Fragranica to be more specific um, red apple is a lot sweeter in a perfume it's used more in a gourmand way 
it often doesn't even smell like apple it usually smells more like a dessert or um yeah like a dessert or something and it's used with woods and stuff so you could even as an example say like tommy hill figure impact intense that is like a red apple and in lots of woods that's probably what they were going for with this um but it doesn't really smell the same so i think that's the general idea of probably what they were going for like a red apple and that wood but this is like more like plum it's got more of that plum smell and then it's got a little bit of that hebrew osmanthus smell in there not the osmanthus that i hate usually but it's a little bit um it's just a weird smell that's the only way i can describe the smell of osmanthus it's a little bit too weird i don't really vibe with it um yeah so plum pepper tonka and some some woods in here that's the main thing i get from this and yeah you could compare it to like invictus victory elixir you could compare it to pop on some ali Hebrood and one million lucky you could compare it to tommy hilfiger impact intense even though it's not that similar to that um let's move on from this fragrance let's review ginger biscuit by joe malone joe malone ginger biscuit 2023 um this one i have already smelled by the way so it's not going to be um first impression or anything like that oops i just wiped it with my finger so i can have it all over my hands now i'm gonna have to wash my hands soon this um this one's okay i like this one but there's some things I don't like about it. Um, nutty. It's got a little bit of that gingerbread smell, like gingerbread baked foods. Um, there's certainly that nutty smell comes, aclo- uh, comes across as plasticky. So I think the nut is hazelnut in this as well. Yeah, so this is like dried ginger not fresh ginger i get more of a dried ginger and then i get like this cookie dough smell um it's like cookie dough or play-doh so that's the the hazelnut or whatever nuts in there it's like gives it this play-doh smell could be almond almond is notorious for that play-doh smell um so like a, a vanilla ginger Vanilla, ginger, hazelnut, cinnamon, maybe cinnamon or cardamom. Um, that's, I think there's some spices in there. It might be nutmeg, whatever. Um, I've written down some notes as usual on my computer, just in a word pad or a word document, just to kind of um, remember what I was smelling the first time. So the first time I smelled this was, um, I got ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, with a caramel and vanilla smell. And yeah, like a gourmand type of fragrance, you know, like it is, it is gourmand, but it's not heavy. This has got a lightness to it. A lot of gourmands are very heavy on the spice or very heavy on the sweetness. This is very light. Like, I don't know how you can make a gourmand this light and airy. Despite having, like, if it's got caramel and cinnamon and vanilla in it, it's very light. Like, it's... I like the way this is balanced a lot, actually. I think the balance of this is perfect for a gourmand. Like, this is pretty much what you want in a gourmand apart from that play-doh nutty smell it's it's really good so it well actually it does depend if you want to smell like food or not because this is a pretty realistic um, gingerbread cookie smell as the name suggests ginger biscuit in australia we would probably call that um gingerbread or a, a cookie instead of a biscuit we call it like a cookie or a a gingerbread 
So I think that's what they were going for with this fragrance and they certainly hit the nail right on the head because it smells exactly like that. Um, so let's look at the notes and see what's in it. Ginger biscuits. And okay, this is unisex. I just had to double check. I was gonna say this is marketed towards women, but it is actually unisex, so never mind. Um, the notes of this are ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, pretty much the main things you would put into uh, a real life gingerbread if you're gonna eat it. And some hazelnut and caramel. Okay, fair enough. You don't really put those in real gingerbread, but you would typically use sugar instead of caramel. So close enough. Instead of sugar, they've just used caramel. No big deal. And hazelnut. I don't really think many people put hazelnut in gingerbread, but you can do it. Like I've talked about before, if you are going to use any type of nut in a fragrance, Hazelnut is probably the best because it has this sweetness to it. It's a little bit sweeter and less bitter than a lot of other nuts. So um, chestnut, hazelnut, they're really good for um, perfume. Um, and then, yeah, vanilla and tonka. So you also put vanilla in, in gingerbread. Um, yeah, I think this is... Probably not going to last a very long time because on skin it's not very long lasting, but This is going to be a, a very subjective fragrance because my sister doesn't like it. I Was on the fence about it. I like it, but I don't like the play-doh smell I'm not sure if I'd want to smell like this like as a perfume But as an air freshener Or a candle or something really good like this is good for a restaurant, spray around the, the restaurant. If you have a bakery, a few sprays around the door. Um, even though you probably don't need to spray perfume in the bakery because you probably already smells like food in there, but yeah, there's an idea for you. Or if you have like a, some kind of theme, like a theme going on, like a party or a, I don't know, like a, Let's say like an art exhibit, for example, like a food themed art exhibit. A few sprays of this set the mood, you know, so I don't know. It's just a random idea. Um, next, this is actually one of the, the best samples I had in this entire box. It's Coney Islands by a bond number nine. This is good stuff. This is actually marketed towards women. Oops, and I like this one a lot actually. I just bought myself a bottle of this online because I like this that much. But it's taking forever to get here, so I ordered it just before Christmas time. Um, and it's already, as I'm filming this video, it's the 30th of December. So yeah, I don't know where my order is. It's taking a long time to get here. But once I get my full bottle, I'm gonna be really happy because this is really really good like I would wear this in summer recommend this to anyone like girls guys anyone could wear this so what does it smell like you get lime it's like one of the best limes I've ever smelled this is probably the best lime fragrance period name a name a better lime in any fragrance I don't think you can really this is this is the peak the pinnacle the peak of lime okay so what else is it there besides the lime there's a little bit of greenness to it um, but it's mainly like a fresh tropical smell so you know like your Creed Virgin Island water Creed Virgin Island water Simone Andreoli's like Malibu party in the bay it's got like that type of smell to it where it's trying to smell like a lime coconut fragrance I don't know if there is coconut in here because I don't really detect I don't detect coconut 
but it is along that like tropical lime fragrance. So it really does, like the name suggests, Coney Island. It it paints that picture in your mind. Okay, now I'm on an island. I'm on a very tropical place, um, drinking some type of lime drink. So that's the next thing I'm going to point out. Is it a lime and coconut or is it a lime and alcohol? It smells like alcohol to me. So I think there is like a, a gin. It might be like a gin and tonic type of thing or a lemon lime lemon lime bitters type of smell to it yeah definitely i think it's like a gin gin a lime and that green smell i don't know what it is i think it's a leaf if it's not a leaf then it's just probably like very zesty lime like the lime zest or something but um i did have some notes written down on my computer as always so let's just quickly let's find something um, if i can find it i don't think i've written down the notes actually um Okay, I actually didn't write down any notes because I can't find them anywhere on my computer. So this is just going to be all guesswork. Okay, so whatever I smelt the first time, I don't really remember. But I do have something else on my computer. On my computer, I write down the main notes of... No, that's not the word. It's more of a, a list of smells. Okay. So I've got everything arranged on my computer, a list of smells, flowers, green, um, sweets, resins, animalics, molecules, florals, spices, um, fruits, um, woods, bitters, and alcohol. So I've got them all arranged on my computer like that. So alcohols, is it? Is it whiskey, gin, absinthe, brandy, cognac, vodka, tequila? I think it's gin. The green smell. So what have I got written down for greens? The greens, I got like green tea, petty grain, mint, juniper, thyme, sage, patchouli, lemon, verbena, divana, um, fig leaf, a, a whole bunch of other herbs. Um, so... I am going to say tea. It's like a petty grain or tea smell. Because it's got like that citrusy smell to it still. So it could be petty grain. It could, that would be the green citrusy smell. Petty grain being the leaf of, um, I think it's an orange or something. Or the leaf of some type of citrus. Um, so... Lime, petty grain, gin. Um, florals. Let's check. Is there florals in it that I can smell? I'm not really getting much of a floral smell, so let's move on to um, fruits. Any fruits in there? Not really, actually. The main thing I can smell is just that citron, uh, no, lime. For some reason, I don't have lime written down on here, but I do now. I think there's, there's like two different types of citrus in there, maybe two or three. Petty grain and gin. So I'm not going to try and guess too much more of that. It's probably some type of wood in there as well. But um, if I had to guess, I'm just going to say like a pretty simple like juniper or cedar, cedar, juniper, maybe pine. I know on some islands they do have pine trees on some islands. 
especially no, uh, Norfolk Island. Norfolk Island has pines. I don't know about Coney Island. I've never been to Coney Island, so not sure what plants they have on the Coney Island, but let's look on for a granica because that's what everyone basically wants to know. They want to know what's actually in it, so let's let's find out. Wow. So this has lime, tequila, melon, guava, caramel, dark chocolate, cinnamon, cedar, musk, vanilla, sandalwood. Um, yeah, I guess so. I guess I can smell the melon. If I had to, yeah, melon is more of an aquatic smell, like a cucumbery melon. So it does have a little bit of that cucumber melon smell but it comes across as more aquatic in this. So it is a little bit more aquatic. Um, I don't know what that green smell is. I think that is the guava. So the guava um, just adds this green smell to it. I'm not sure why. It might be the skin of the guava, like the skin of it. Um, yeah. So, I definitely can't smell the caramel, chocolate, cinnamon, vanilla, or the musk, but I can smell just pretty much lime, tequila, melon, cedar, and guava, so. There you go, but you, if I had to guess the smell, the smell is more of a lime gin, lime gin, pedigrain, lime gin, pedigrain, and um, cedar. That's the main type of smell so actually I think I'm getting a rash from 1 million elixir is giving me a rash on my hand I've got like this this mark from um, that's not good I hope I'm not allergic to that it yeah, doesn't matter I'll live. I'm not going to die or anything. So, two more fragrances to review. Um, let's just try and find them. Hugo Jeans. Okay, Hugo Jeans. Yep. Boom. And the bottle, it's like a legit sample that you get from like online orders with the, the little typical cap. Well, it doesn't have a cap on it. I mean, it's got like the, the atomizer. So let's give this a spray. This one, I really liked it at first until my sister pointed out something that ruined it for me. This, I thought, was very um, soapy, fruity, and this has that fabric softener smell to it. So, that's the, the main problem I didn't like. My sister said it smells like laundry detergent or fabric softener, and that has definitely ruined it for me because now that's all I can smell. However, let's try and break this down a little bit more. So I'm not just saying fabric softener or detergent. Um, fruity smell. It's definitely more of a red fruity smell. I'm pretty sure it's rhubarb. But then that soapy smell, it's very hard to pinpoint what that is. Because it doesn't smell like cardamom. And it doesn't smell like iris. But it is a very like musky. Is it musk? I think it might be like a synthetic musk or something. Um, obviously they're all synthetic musks, but um Yeah. 
I really don't know what that that soapy smell is. It's probably it could be cardamom or iris. It just doesn't smell like it. It's really got like the detergent smell. So it could be alcohol, synthetic molecules. It does smell synthetic. Um, I wanted to do, like compare it to like Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce and all those, but in reality, it's not like them. The only thing I can really say is similar is it's soapy and it's hard to figure out what the smell is. So this is a very hard fragrance to figure out the smells because I'm getting a lot of like, um, well, I had written down on my computer the first time it was apple and rhubarb. That was the main guess was apple and rhubarb. That's the fruity smell. Um, then I guess musk and cardamom is has to be something to do with that soapy detergent smell. Um, and that's my guess. That's all I can really guess for this fragrance. Apple, rhubarb, and musk cardamom. Um, anything else I'd written down? I think I said it has a little bit of that race, uh, Prasasi Hawass, Invictus, um, Paca Reban Invictus, Born in Roma by Valentino. Um... So if I had to compare it to a fragrance like Invictus, then I would say that's got like more of a jasmine smell to it. So there could be jasmine in this. If I compare it to a fragrance like uh, Brissasi Hawass, that has some fruity notes in there. I think it's plum. So it could be plum. It could be a little bit more of that Brissasi Hawass DNA in there. It could be more of the Invictus jasmine. Um. But then, if you look at Valentino, Born in Roma, that's mainly violet leaf, so that could be um, something, you know? So let's let's try and look at this fragrance from a different perspective of like, what's in the, in the fragrances this smells the closest to. So violet leaf from Born in Roma, Jasmine from Invictus, and Plum from Rosasi Hawass. Um, and I also had written down possibly orange blossom cardamom as well. So there are possibilities of being in here. Um, now I'll just look on Fragranica. Um, okay, so we're just looking at Fragranica quickly for the official notes. Um, grapefruit, lime, and juniper berry, mint, cedar, and vetiver. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, my nose is officially broken. No, I'm just joking. You know, like, sometimes it doesn't smell anything like the notes suggest. This is definitely the case where it smells nothing like the notes listed. Honestly... I gotta disagree with Fragranica here, even though that's the official notes, you know, but nah, it's it's definitely like more closer to like Rosasi Hawass, Invictus, Born in Roma. It's got something like that in there. Like there's definitely something similar to those fragrances. So whatever that is, my nose can pick it out. And I don't know exactly what it is, but my nose is really like picking that out. So um one more fragrance I should review just before I end this video. Um, okay, Salted Green Mango by Strangers. Let me just find this. Okay, I believe that one's in here somewhere. I was just looking on my computer at the fragrances that I haven't reviewed yet, so in here somewhere sheesh oh here it is uh, salted green mango and this is by strangers perfumery 
And there was actually another one I didn't review, which is it's by 4711 and it's called Lemon and Ginger. Lemon and Ginger. But this fragrance is so bad that I actually don't really want to waste my time reviewing that. So I don't think this is ever going to get a video just because it's not good enough to for me to review. So I just have to point that out. Some fragrances just like that. There's nothing I can really talk about with it. It would just be a really boring video of me just saying it smells like cheap citrus basically and toilet spray. So um, anyway, Strangers Perfumery Salted Green Mango. Let's give this a try. Ooh, this has a very medicinal smell at the opening. The opening smells like Eau Sauvage, <laughs> Dior Eau Sauvage, mixed with like Dunhill Icon. Dunhill Icon, Eau Sauvage, uh, maybe a little bit of Lalique, Poor Home. Maybe Mansara Ayud, Lemon Mint. Oh, there's one. There's another fragrance. It reminds me. Of, oh, Givenchy Gentleman Cologne. It's a little bit like that as well. So, there is something those have in in common. It's iris. Um, sometimes fresh iris is medicinal like this, but I know what it is. It's oak moss. I'm not gonna make that same mistake again. I think this is oak moss and iris, or oak moss or iris, I should say. Um. And then something I had to just point out on my computer is that I can't smell any fruit. Um, I get a little bit of citrus. No, I get a lot of citrus, I mean. Citrus, oak moss, medicinal oak moss, I should say. Like a, a very medicinal Fujia style, uh, style oak moss medicinal iris like in a fresh type of way something green something else that's green in there petty grain um oh actually there you go salted green mango so that helps me a lot it's got salted green mango in there so i'm gonna say salt green mango salt green mango oak moss citrus petty grain um, there's some type of wood in there. Um, I'm looking on my notes. So what did I say? I said like a spicy ginger. Maybe spicy ginger or a pepper. There could be magnolia. Um, it's got a little bit of a tart floral smell apparently. I don't know if that's in a dry down. Tart floral. Yeah, I could smell a little bit of floral. Um, but magnolia, I actually, I may re retract that opinion. I don't think I could smell magnolia in there. Despite writing that down on my first impression. So, um... Okay, here's what I did say when I first tried it. Salt, mango, vetiver, um, chili, oh, not chili, uh, pimento pepper. So, pimento, I can definitely smell that. That's the peppery smell. Um, yeah, this is really green, so... Yeah, it's it's very salty. It's very green. It's very um, citrusy, medicinal, like oak moss iris. Um, that's my guess anyway. Um, let's just quickly find the official notes because my battery is gonna die on my computer. And then we'll do a quick ranking just before 
Now I might end the video. Um, so it's got seaweed, salt, mango, vetiver, pomelo, lime, guava, pedigrain, bitter orange, bergamot, gooseberry, uh, chili pepper, Chili pepper, magnolia, alimi, sandalwood, pineapple, rose. So you can look up the notes yourself because I don't have time. I have to finish this video right now. So best, uh, let's rank, let's quickly rank them. Coney Island, the best. Um, one million elixir, second best. Ginger biscuit, third. Hugo jeans, fourth. And strangers, last. So. Thanks for watching, guys. I um, have to end the video right here. Like and subscribe. Peace, and thanks for watching.